I'm, I'm guessing you're a bit of a, a tech head, are you? Or are you just very specific about your bike fit? I don't know. Maybe, maybe a bit. But what, 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 what do you think, Ben? Casper is phenomenal when it comes to feedback, when it comes to helping us uh, develop the next uh, the next level product. So Casper is someone we, we rely on heavily to help us set the targets for uh, what we're trying to achieve in the future. Have you been testing anything new recently? I see there's a saddle on there that what, 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 what is it they usually they specialize is they're constantly developing uh, new products and using <laughs> our world-class athletes to uh, something like that, no? <laughs> I, I love the fact that Casper knows our Project Black statement by heart. Yeah, we, we, we really, really respect everything Casper has to say about products, so he's one of the first riders we get on developmental product to let us know what he thinks. So you get all the first, first picks of the new stuff sent to your house, do you? No comment. <laughs> and I'm guessing, guessing you've got a good tool set at home from from uni or. Yeah, uh, yeah. Actually, um, I had a quick step. I like, did like a whole remodeling of my uh, of my workshop at home, and uh, Junior sent me this whole big toolbox on wheels that I have at home now, and it's it's quite nice. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm pretty well off at home with my with my setup you looked after then yeah that's uh, i would say so <laughs> have you always been very specific about the equipment that you use uh even for your the junior amateur com comest days also everything like that yeah i think so i i always uh I got, it was always my idea that if I didn't end up being a cyclist, I wanted to be an engineer. So like the whole technical side of, of cycling uh, has always interested me uh, a lot. So uh, to be able to, to work with, with brands like Specialized and Shimano and Roval and so on and, and give them feedback that you can see really goes into the products that we use. It's, that's like, that's super, super fun for me. So I love it. So have you studied engineering then? Unfortunately not. No, uh, the cycling, uh, the cycling thing uh, worked out, so uh, I never got around to uh, study engineering. Yeah, it worked out just a little bit, I suppose. Yeah, just a bit. You're getting there. Yeah, I'm all right. <laughs> all right. Will you, will you change equipment throughout the tour? Will you use, obviously, you'll obviously use different wheels. I see there's some tires there, which you'll probably give me the same statement about <laughs> that you gave me a moment ago. But will you be using different equipment throughout the tour? Uh, yeah, wheels and tires uh, is uh, is the biggest uh, biggest change or the only change I would say. I always run like the same 1134 uh, cassette that the other guys usually put it on for the mountain stages, but I prefer like the range of gears on that one, so I even run that on the flat stages. So for me, the, really the only change is, is the wheels and, and tires. Now, have you seen a massive change of equipment uh, throughout your career? Have you seen a, a bit, have you obviously the advent of the disc brakes has made tyre width not huge but you've been able to run wider tyres wider wheels which obviously will change the way a bike's able to perform yeah definitely and and also like the way the the engineers are able to shape the the frame for aerodynamic purposes like before you had to stick a, a brake on the front there and there was it was quite restricted now you can do now you can do a lot more uh, so I think, uh, and, and, and as a braking system, I, I, I was always, yeah, right from the get-go, a big fan of it. Uh, as soon as I, I got, to, got to ride it, I, I made, that, made that switch immediately. So I, that's something I really enjoy, and, and I think it opens up some good, op, um, good opportunities for the engineers also. So the next question is, when you can invite us around here, your your garage out, out so we can have a, a nosy through your toolbox nosy through all the interesting bits hanging up in the garage <laughs> you, you guys are always welcome hey there we go it's lucky held this video back in it because well he's just gone and got a win and he lovely stuff just goes to show if you look after your equipment you never know where it can take you that and training and talent anyway let's delve into another couple of bikes because we've got fabio jacobson and ala phillips now if you believe all the rumours, or all the upset people, Alaphilippe, you never know, might be leaving next year. And also, well, rumour has it that Jakobsen's off as well. Either way, they're still both on the specialised Tarmac SL7s. No sight of that elusive SL8 
yet. So let's delve in, see what they're riding. Jakobsen, now there's a gentleman who's got a fancy paint job because, of course, he is European champion at the moment. So, yeah, he's got the European stars and stripes, can we call it, on there. Subtle but very sweet. Same equipment, Jores DI2, Rover wheels as Alaphilippe, but where he's different is the bars. He's using the new one-piece Rover Rapid bars, something that was only um, come to light couple of months back now word on the street or if you look through the catalogue is that these one piece bar and stem coming at 50 grams lighter than if you were to go for the like a two piece setup drop is one two five millimeters reach is 75 mil on there aero property as well look very aero bar widths where you can get them from 38 through to 44 stem length is quite a few all the way from 75 mil up to 125 now the reason we might not see all the pros jumping on these bars is because a lot of them do like to go for pretty long stems 130s 140s if you're a belgian so even though specialized and roval have made them more aero and lighter than a two-piece setup it's probably the reason why we won't see every specialized sponsored rider using these bars even though there is sort of 15 different combinations between stem and bar which that roval are making on to some project black stuff now because i've seen two items that aren't out yet this is two items that are probably being tested by the team and hopefully we'll see the light of day very soon first up is a set of tires the turbo wet now these were being used prior to the tour in training now these have got to be a pure wet weather racing tire because we've already seen back in may the release of the mondo which was sort of an endurance all-round tyre. It's going to be interesting to see how you get sort of the crossover between the two, how they're going to really sell one wet tyre and one endurance tyre. I'm guessing these are just lighter than the Mondo, but just as sticky. So stay tuned for news on them. Another item you might want to be staying tuned for is a new saddle. Probably a very costly saddle, but a saddle nevertheless. Specialised were of course one of the first brands along with Physic who released a 3D printed saddle. Both companies work with a company called Carbon who produce 3D printed parts not by laying in material on top of one another but by basically if you've seen Terminator 2 moulding from the base upwards out of a vat of liquid. So yeah a bit like T3000, 2000 you know the one that isn't Arnie. Now this is a completely different shape to the two saddles that Specialized already have out that are 3D printed, the power mirror and the roaming mirror. It has also got a bit of a covering to it, they're not open honeycomb structure like those two either, which surprises me because I really like the grip that the honeycomb offers you out on the bike. Looking at it, it looks kind of like the shape of the Phenom saddle that's already in the specialized range. Carbon shell, of course, carbon rails to keep it all premium. I'm guessing we're probably gonna see this released round about the world, just like we saw the original power mirror back at Richmond and then the Roman, which I think was released round about the world when it was held in Belgium. Right, that's all you're getting from me, all you're getting from the quick step team. I apologize for the noise behind me, but you try and find somewhere quiet. Jaw in the tour in France. Let us know what you think of the bikes. Let us know if you want to see uh, Casper Asgreen's workshop. I'd love to see what tools Junior have offered him. Um, yeah, let us know about the Project Black stuff. Join the conversation, basically. If you haven't already, click that subscribe button. And thanks for watching and enjoy your riding.